My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The topic that we're going to cover today is the topic of what is known as interquartile, interquartile range. It is something that you will find on page number 272. Please turn to page 272 and look at example number, example number 4.2.5, which is exactly what we're going to do right now, you and I together. And we, we are in the process obviously of doing the data analysis topic, which we started a few days ago. Let's take a look at it. We are given 16 observations and we are asked to calculate the interquartile range. Very simple question. What is the interquartile range for the set of data? And the set of data has 16 observations. It goes something like this. 2, 4, 4, 5. Let's not put it too close to each other. I'm going to make it look like 45. 7, 7, 7. Two, four, four, five, seven, 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 eight, eight, nine, 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 nine. There are sixteen observations that are given to us. In order to find the interquartile range, we have to first understand what that concept actually means. Quartile means exactly what it says. It means to divide the population or set of data into four equal parts. Each quartile contains 25% of the observation. And in order for us to be able to divide the entire population, the population means set of data, whatever observations that you have there, which is sometimes referred to as a population, sometimes is referred to as a sample. Don't worry about the nitty-gritty of these uh, terms for statistics because in the GRE they do not get into that much detail. Okay, So it's okay to speak loosely because they don't make a distinction between sample and the, and the population. So if you have a sample or a population or set of data or set of observation, you take your set of observations and our goal is to divide them into four equal parts. And in order for us to be, in, in, in order for us to be able to divide them into four equal parts, we, ne we need to calculate three quantities, which are called quartiles. Not four, even though it's quartiles, but we, we don't need to calculate four quantities, only three quantities. This is how it's going to go. Here's your set of data from the lowest to the highest and the first quartile is going to capture 25% of the population. This, from the beginning of the first quartile here or rather to, from the end of the first quartile until the end of the second quartile it's going to capture the next 25% of the population. And then the third quartile, the end of the third quartile will capture the other 25% of the population. And finally from the beginning of the third quartile until the end, which is the highest number, the greatest number, this is the lowest observation, the greatest number, this is going to capture the top 25% of the population. The question is, what does inter interquartile range means? Interquartile range means exactly what it says. It's a range. You know what range means? In the, in the ordinary range, we simply take the difference of the greatest and the lowest. We take the difference between these two extremes. Instead of taking the uh, difference between these two extremes, in the interquartile range, we take the difference of these two guys. These two guys. And the range that we are interested in, the range that we are interested in, is this guy right here in the middle. Right here. This is what is known as the interquartile range. It captures interquartile range. We usually use the letter IR, interquartile range interquartile range captures the middle 50% of the population. It captures the middle 50% of the population. So if you're in the, if, if your score, if your teacher tells you that this is your score for the quiz and you were in the interquartile range, what he or she has told you is that you are neither a dummy nor a genius. Your score was not in the bottom 25% of the students. You are not in the bottom 25% of the students. You are also not in the top 25% of the students. You are somewhere in the middle, middle 
and the inter interquartile range, which is what we have to calculate here. So the very first thing we have to do here is to divide up this population into four equal parts. Let's do that. We're going to divide it up into four equal parts, which makes it very easy. Life is sweet because they give you exactly 16 observations. Now, had there been 17 observations, we would start in the middle. We would start in the middle, had, um, just, just, to, just to make it interesting, just to make you understand, let's pretend that there is one more observation here, let's put in one more here, let's call it 17 and a quarter. Let's pretend that this is the, this is the eighth observation. So we have eight observations on the, on the left hand side here, four here and four here. Then we have eight observations on, on the right hand side here. And this guy is right in the middle, which is your median. The median is the interquartile, second quartile. Median is the second quartile. Here we do not have 15 observations. We have, we have eight. Uh, we have 16 observations. So again, we divide up into equal parts, and the second and the and the interquartile, a uh, second quartile rather, second quartile is going to be the average of these two guys. Average of seven and seven, of course, is just seven. Average of seven and seven is of course seven. But technically, what is going on is we take we are looking for something. Technically, what is going on is that we're looking for something that falls right in the middle. Had this been 8, we would have taken the average of 7 and 8. So here your second quartile is exactly 7, which as I said, second quartile is the exact same concept as the median. Is the exact same concept as the median. Second quartile tells you that the 50% of, of the population is below it, and 50% of the population is above it, which is the definition of median. Let's find the first quartile. The first quartile, we have we have four, we have four to the left of it, four to the right of it. We are right here. We have to find the average of six and seven. The second quartile, or rather, the first quartile is going to be the average of these two numbers, five and seven. We take the average of it, which of course is six. That is your first quartile. And finally, the third quartile falls right in the middle here. The third quartile is going to be the average of eight and nine. You add up the 8 and the 9, divide by 2, and you're going to get 8 and a half. That's our third quartile. Now, before we go any further, let's introduce one more terminolo terminology. Listen carefully. Let's introduce one more terminology, which would not apply here because there are only 16 observations here. But if you had a large set of observations, in the, in the case of large set of observations, we also use the term, of course, you could use it here. It does, does, it's not going to do any harm, but typically one does not. We also use uh, the concept of what is known as percentile. Percentile. So this Q1, the first quartile, is same as your 25th percentile. Why is it 25th percentile? Because Q1 tells you that the first quartile tells you that 25% of the observation, 25% of the observations are below it. And of course that would also imply that 75% are above it. 75% are above it, which of course is, 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 is the implication of that. The second quartile tells you that 50% of the observations, 50% of the observations are below it. Which also implies that 50% are above. And if 50% are below the observation, that 50% are above it, that is the definition of median. So your second quartile is the median. There are, there are three different ways you can express this idea. You can call the second quartile, you can call it median, or you can call it 50th percentile. This is how we write it, P with a subscript 50. If, if I take the exam, say for if I took the exam and my score was 672, I'm just making it up, which would not apply in the, in the new GRE, I'm still stuck in the, old, 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 in the olden days. The, the scale in the GRE used to be from 200 to, to 800. And if my score, if I took the GRE and my score was 6, 672, and they write it as P78, what that tells me is that I was in the 78th percentile, which means 78% of the people who took the exam scored below I did, which also implies that 22% of the people who took the exam scored above, above I did. That's what 78 percentile means. This is 50th percentile. Finally, the third quartile, finally, the third quartile means that 75% of the observations, 75% of the observations are 
below it, which also implies that 25% are above it. As you can clearly see, this third quartile is 8.5. And, and out of the 16 observations, we can see that 12 of them are below 8.5. 12 out of 16 is 3 quarter of 16, which is 75% of the population. So we can write this, this third quartile, Q3, as P75. It's a 75th percentile. It's a 75th percentile. This is a 25th percentile. This is a 50th percentile. Let's find these figures, shall we? Enough of the talk. Let's find them. Well, what if we actually did that? This is 6, this was 7, and that's 8 and a half. That's it. We're done. Let's find interquartile range. That's it. We're almost there. So the interquartile range here, interquartile range is going to be, you take the third quartile uh, right here, this figure here, which is eight and a half, and you subtract the first quartile, which in this case is exactly six. So your interquartile range equals two and a half. Let me change the marker. This marker all of a sudden is dying because it was open all this time, it's, it's drying up. There you go, that is your interquartile inter range. That's it. Now we're going to show this, this all, inf all of this information on a graph, on the number line, and see what it looks like. We can write all of this out like we did here, or we can present the same information in a very concise manner, on a very concise, very elegant manner, on a number line. And see what it looks like, shall we? Which is what the mathematician, which is what the statisticians do. Then don't go around writing all these things. They want to be quick. They want to be fast. They want to be efficient. An efficient manner of of uh, displaying, manifesting the same ideas, same same uh, information is to put it on a line graph, number line graph. Let's do it. Let's do it. I don't want to raise anything, so let's do it right here. If I can find one decent bloody marker, okay, so let's start from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, one, and ten. What is our lowest one? Our lowest one is 2. Let's start with 0. The lowest is 2. Let's call it L. So the story begins here. This is our lowest. What is our first quartile? The first quartile is 6. 6 falls right here. This is our first quartile. What is our second quartile? Our second quartile is 7, which falls right here. Let's put a box around it so that it's easy to see. What is our third quartile? Our third quartile is 8.5. 8.5 would fall somewhere here. That is our third quartile. And finally, what is our greatest observation? The, the greatest observation is 9, which of course stops right here. So it goes all the way, let me use a different color so that, so that I can darken it properly. So it goes all the way from here. This is all dark. This is the greatest observation. This is the lowest one. And it goes all the way from here. All the way from here, like this. Voila. Now what does this graph tell us? What does this graph tell us? Well, I'm, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what this graph tells us by pretending that we have no other information. Just pretend none of this exists. All we have in front of us, all that, is, that we have in front of us is this graph. This graph actually has a name. It is called, for some strange and inexplicable reason, it is called 
box and whisker block. God only knows who came up with it, but apparently to that person, this is the box right here and these are whiskers. Uh, that's what it is. There's a whisker here and there's a whisker here. Box and whisker plot is what it's called. Let's see what this graph actually tells us, this box and whisker graph. If they give you a box and whisker graph on the exam, just like this, will you be able to interpret it? Would you be able to extract information from it? Let's go through it one by one. The very first thing we notice is that the lowest observation, L, is 2. So the lowest observation here is... The lowest observation is 2. The second thing we notice is that the greatest observation is 9. The greatest observation is 9. That tells us that the range is... 7. Then we notice that the Q1 is 6. Q1 is 6. I also see a line here for Q2. Q2 is 7. But Q2 is same as the median. So that tells us that tells us that the median of this population the median of this population is 7. Which tells us that 75% of the population is below this mark. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to 75%. Median is 50%. This mark tells us that half the observations are below that mark, half the observations are above 7. Half the observations are above 7, half the observations are below 7. But another thing that we notice is that half the observations that are above 7, they are very close to each other. They are all clustered because it, here it is widespread. There are more observations on the lower end, there is, there is a more of a spread in the lower end, more of a variety, more of a dispersion on the lower end of the observations than it is on the high end. They are all clustered around from the median. From median it goes all the way up to 9. And then we observe that the second third quartile, right here is your third quartile, third quartile is 8.5. Since third quartile is 8.5, first quartile is 6.5. Since third quartile is 8.5, and six in the first quartile is six, not six and a half rather, just six. That tells us that that the extreme different the extreme values, listen carefully, this tells us that the extreme values in the middle 50% of the population, the extreme values in the middle 50% of the populations differ by only two and a half points. It also tells us that the 50% of the population, 50%, the middle 50% of the population, the middle 50% of the population lies between this guy right here, Q1, which is 6, and Q3, this guy right here, 8.5. 50% of the population lies between 6 and 8.5. And, and that difference of 8.5 and, and 6 is called the interquartile range. That's what, that's what it tells us. It tells us all of these things that we knew of course already, but that's how you read it. And that's what it is. So one more time, a quick recapitulation here. This, this marker that you see in the middle, that, that is your median. This, this guy right here, the second quartile here, that is your median. This, this is the median. How the observations are going to fall below it, how the observations are going to fall below ab above it. The first quartile marker and the third quartile marker, the spread of the first quartile to third quartile is what we call the interquartile range. And the overall range, which is from the lowest to the greatest, which in this case is 7. That's all. That's it. We're done. I will see you tomorrow when we will start solving the problems that you see on page number, just so you know what I have in mind here, we're going to start solving the problem that you see on page number 296, the exercises. Now tomorrow's video, because today's video is 181, tomorrow's video and the day after tomorrow's video should say 182 and 183, but they're not going to. This I think it says 178 and it says 179, just ignore 178 and 179 in the video it says it, but I'm going to tag them as 182 and 183 and we're going to continue from there, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.